all right all right where's my other phone now oh <laughs> ah, i need this this is no, I'm, I'm gonna use this also yeah i need this to be like this oh. no it's fine let me see how i can set up good afternoon guys afternoon how are you it's good to see a much fuller class i think we had a third if not a quarter of the class last week and i was disappointed eh? drove all the way to come and attend to just a fraction of the class why link it also i'm not sure i forgive you yet especially since you don't have your scripts yet i still hold the power but welcome guys welcome as I promised to those that were here last week, I have a special guest that will be coming to do a presentation for you guys in relation to the module we are currently covering. His name is Moses Temba. He's been my friend and colleague since 2010. We met during ComSev. So just as much as it's possible for you guys who have started a friendship here at Koteshari, it can go on for life. It will be up to you guys. And it will also depend on and it will also depend on the value that you create to one another more than anything, right? So we did community service together. You already know a bit of my history, so it coincides with his. We are together at Oartamo International Airport. When I went to the city of Johannesburg, he ventured off into the private sector as a food auditor. He did that, was it a year and a half? Yeah, and a year. Yeah, food. so it was, he was there for a year, then he came to join me at the city of Johannesburg, but he worked in a different region, which is where he still is now, region E of the city of Johannesburg. He's now a senior environmental health practitioner there with vast experience over 10 years now. Yeah. Probably yeah. 12 years. We are, we are old. We are old, <laughs> definitely. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's over 12 years experience, guys, and he's still making moves within the profession. You should always find someone who's better than you in more respect than one. Back in 2011, there's this thing called the Alfred and Zoe Awards that the city of Johannesburg does. It's also done at national level. So we are very competitive, the two, the both of us. So it's a competition where you do presentations, research, and you try to be the most innovative in the region and so on. And hey, he schooled me. Eh? He came first, I came third. As much as I speak so much and so on, uh, there are guys who are just a level above, a notch up. So I had to make sure that even after those couple of years, he still sticks by me here. Even in terms of business, he's the one that sparked the idea because for years he was like, when are we opening a business? When are we opening a business? I was like, ah, business. I was still very focused on just the work aspect of things. But he, he sparked that idea and it came to life. Currently, he's doing his post-grad in management. Uh, public management. In public management. And so some of these modules then coincide, except his is just that it's, it's more advanced. So I told him to come with a bit of that advanced knowledge because I know I have an advanced group here. So please give him a warm welcome and a round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Timber, yeah. they are all yours. Thank okay, you, all right. They are all wow, yours. What a, what a warm welcome. Uh, good evening, guys. Good evening. I think he's said a mouthful of who I is. am, you know. Um, my name is Moses Temba, like he said. Uh, I'm currently uh, studying, uh, working uh, for the city of Johannesburg. Uh, it's, it's about 11 years now, being an EHP. Uh, but I'm sure most of you might be wondering, uh, an EHP, the slide is saying recruitment and selection uh, in human resource management. What, what does this guy know? Um, I'm basically currently studying, uh, I'm doing my postgrad uh, with the University of Pretoria. Uh, so within that, uh, we, we, we tackle a lot of things. So there's a module that I, I completed, which is human resource. And then what better way to come and equip you guys? Because you guys, I believe, you're fourth years, right? Now you guys will be going out there into the outside world. So I think it's very important to have an idea of what 
the organization or the companies are looking out, looking for out there, right? Because um, I'm sure most of you you would wonder why companies like uh, Google or Apple recruit the top candidates, right? And then did you know that 50% of new hires they actually leave their work in 18 months because they actually joined the wrong company, right? So I think today, when you guys live here, you'll be having an idea of what companies, whether in the public sector or in the private, when it comes to recruitment and selection, uh, what are they looking for, right? And then this is very important, not only outside, but also I believe that is part of your module. So it's gonna be part of your exam, right? So whatever that is gonna come up here, please guys listen, let's engage, let's talk, let's have fun. And then so that when you do your studies, you guys are okay, right? All right. So like I said, we'll be talking about recruitment and selection in, in human resource management. Learning outcomes. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to explain what is the recruitment and selection. You will be able to discuss the recruitment process. You will be able to identify internal and external methods when it comes to recruitment. You will be able to explain the role of the HR when it comes to the recruitment and selection process. You will be able to now discuss the sequence of a typical selection process. You'll be able to discuss the different types of selection uh, interviews. You'll be able to discuss the merits when it comes to reference checking uh, in terms of what the HR specialist or HR personnel deal with when it comes to reference checking. And then you'll be able to discuss the various decision strategies for selection, right? So, you must tell me if I'm going too fast, ne? Okay, so most of you guys are still gonna be employed. Maybe you guys have been employed before, but there's a whole lot of processes that as a company or an organization, before you can recruit or employ someone, there's various uh, 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 things that are going into the, in the background. Because you can see now, competition is vast. People can cram questions. So the HR personnel as well now, they need to look out for all those things, you know, so that they get the right fit for the company. Especially now in South Africa, we have a lot of people complaining that, especially in the public sector, people are lazy, right? But now, should organizations get this right in terms of selection and recruitment, then we're gonna avoid a whole lot of problems that are happening currently in the organization. So. What is this recruitment that I've been talking about? Recruitment is a process of acquiring applicants who are available and qualified to fill positions in organizations, right? That's you guys. Once you now have qualified, you've got environmental health, then you guys can venture into mining and whatever. Now, recruitment is now, now when they look for you. It's recruiting. Then selection, that's now the process of choosing from the applicants, the individual who's best suited for a particular position. Now, every organization, every company, whether big or small, it has to recruit to fill vacant positions. So it's part of every organization, every organization has to do this, right? Now, the recruitment process, uh, this is just a little bit technical, but I'm gonna try summarize it for you guys so that you can understand. Every organization before it, let's say, is applying for a post, whether they're looking for an EHP or whoever that they're looking for, they need to investigate the environment. They need to determine the relevant labor market and gather information. What am I talking about? The labor market, basically, you know, guys, we come from a disadvantaged background. You've got skilled, you've got semi-skilled individuals. So there needs to be job description tailored for the particular job. So there's investigations that happen, the organization does backgrounds, do they want a white person? Do they want a black person? We now have people with disabilities. Is the post gonna accommodate people with disabilities? 
So all those processes, the organization, the HR department needs to do all those thorough investigations in terms of who are the people that they need, right? Now, most people who are available for recruitment, they are the unemployed, obviously, because they want jobs, right? But then now you'll find that organizations also want to recruit top candidates. People who, because when you're unemployed, you don't have experience, right? But then as a company, you want someone who's just gonna come in and run. Little orientation, they save money in terms of taking you for training and all those things, right? So now, where do these organizations look for this type of people? They look for part-time employees. Right now in the banking sector, they're utilizing a lot of part-time uh, 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 people because as an organization, you, you get to save money, you pay them less, they have to get less benefits, you know? So organizations now are going for part-time employees. And then you have underemployed uh, uh, individuals. This now will be someone who has done environmental health, but because you're not getting any employment, you start working at a retail shop or working for that company that is not in line with what you have trained for, right? So organizations will recruit those type of underemployed individuals. And then there's also what you call pirating. Pirating now is recruiting from other companies. Um, one organization which is very good in pirating, I know is uh, Deben Municipality. They take a lot of our staff, especially from City of Joburg. Why? Because they know they've got experience. They hit the ground running, little orientation. But then now, pirating, it, you need to, the organization needs to attract you now with better benefits, salary, you know, all those uh, 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 conditions, better uh, working conditions. So now, in terms of recruitment, we, we, we touched on the unemployed, which is the most vast uh, people that organizations will employ. But remember now, we also have different type of uh, candidates that an organization will want to get, right? Are you still with me, guys? Okay. So now, recruitment sources. So now, once this organization, remember, has done its background, are they gonna get someone who's disabled? Do they want a skilled individual? Do they want white, black, colored, and all those things? So once everything has been determined by the organization, now the organization now needs to decide. Are they going to recruit from inside the organization or are they going to recruit from outside, which is externally, right? Of which we'll deal more because you guys will be from the external part, right? But remember now, as an organization, there is always advantages and disadvantages, correct? Of getting someone from inside, of getting someone from outside, right? So let's just briefly um, see what are those uh, advantages. So here's company X. They've got a vacant position. They decide, okay, fine. We're gonna fill it from within. Why? Because when you fill an organ, a, a position from inside, the employees who are also part of the company, they get to feel that I also have a chance to, to grow, you know? It boosts morale, you know? And once this one has moved up, it means it leaves position for a lower level to also come in. So that, and then obviously at the end of the day, it's less expensive. The person is familiar with the environment, right? You don't have to spend a lot of time showing them how, showing them the place, getting familiar with the people. So that, that is one advantage of what? Internal recruitment. But then now it also comes with its own disadvantages when you get someone from within, right? It's gonna be competition among staff, you know? And then now also, let's say you guys are friends. You get promoted. You guys used to go out. You know her secrets. I really want to listen to her if she's now your boss. So those are now what companies have to think about. To say, okay, when we promote this person, are the, are the subordinates going to listen to this person, right? And then we know we blacks, sometimes witchcraft plays a role. <laughs> so 
we need to be very wary of, of internal promotions, right? So now, organizations by law have to do what you call job posting. How do they now make their internal employees aware of the particular uh, vacant position? We've got what you call your normal uh, traditional bulletin board where they need to make sure that they post whatever the particular vacant position on the boards. Um, we've got email base where you send through email uh, whatever uh, 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 job which is available. And then we've got what you call the organization's internet, which is, I believe that is so much easier. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's in line with the, the technological world in terms of what's happening now. So you just have to now on the company website, when there's a vacant post, like in situ of Johannesburg, you just have to get in there. If it, you fit the description, you apply, and then you get a response same time. It limits you now have to go through your manager obviously can be a lot of bias. So you just deal directly with HR, right? So that's your internal recruitment in terms of how the organization deals with. Now, this is more applicable to you guys, which is external recruitment now, right? So external recruitment varies. There is the one where that you guys are used to, which is direct application, you physically hand in your CV or you mail it by post or whatever. That's when, when you're looking for the external uh, uh, a person. And there's what you call employee referral. Employee referral can be similar to pirating, but whereby he's working for Ikuruleni, he can say there's a guy at City of Johannesburg, let's bring him on board. That's how organizations uh, deal with external recruitment. And then we've got the university or school recruiting. You know, This is where they pre-screen uh, 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 programs which are designed to identify, not necessarily top students, but students who show potential. You know? uh, for example, not, not long ago, um, we ha I had uh, one of the lecturers uh, uh, giving me two names of what students who are looking for employment. But remember now, the lecturer must vouch for you because now they're bringing you into the, the organization. So they do, in terms of recruitment, it, it works. Thereby we mark you. If you guys come for your wills or whatever, uh, we see you, right? And then when you come through, we're like, okay, this one has potential. So that is one way of recruiting or taking you guys directly from the university, putting you guys into employment. That's how uh, companies do recruitment. And then obviously you've got agencies, um, which is normally the last resort because it's expensive. Uh, we all know you take your CV through an external company, they take 20% or whatever percentage. That is how organizations get, 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 get people. And then obviously there's advertising, which is e-recruitment, which is what I'm sure most of you are familiar with right now, you know, the likes of LinkedIn, newspaper adverts, where you'll see the adverts being posted there. There's a radio, television. On Facebook now you see posts. There's groups now which they advertise, post, and all those. So companies sometimes will go onto those platforms. So those are basically now the external recruitment methods that an organization would want, correct? when they want an individual. So it also has its own disadvantage and advantage. Uh, because now, when you recruit someone from outside, they, they come with fresh ideas, right? They don't know the people, they don't know the environment. So people are more to give them respect, unlike someone who's internal, right? But then now, it also has its own disadvantages. Because as much as they bring new ideas, they don't know the environment, it might take longer for them to be productive. So as an organization, they always weigh uh, their, their options, right? Um, any, any, any questions on, on, on recruitment? Okay. Remember now, we talked that it's recruitment 
and selection. Recruitment is the how the company now determines who they want, how they go about it, and all that, right? Now, you guys have handed in your CV, whether it's direct through LinkedIn or referral, whatever way. You are recruited from the university, it's different ways. Now, the organization has a responsibility now to select. What selection? Selection, this is the process of choosing from a group of applicants the individual best suited for the position, right? So organizations as well, they need to get someone who meets the goals and the objectives of every organization. You don't just take no more back. They, they, so as much as you guys are here, all of you, you can send in all your CVs, but now they'll, you'll see the selection process in terms of now how do organizations choose their best candidates, right? Just a little bit of theory. I'm just going to go through this very quickly. I'm not going to bore you. So now when it comes to the selection process, the ideal situation, selection involves choosing the best applicant to fill the position, right? Your HR manager will review, screen whoever meets the job description based on the qualification and experience, right? The selection process involves making a judgment. It's not about the applicant, like I said, but it's about the fit between him or her and the job, right? And now there is no perfect test or perfect way to gauge an applicant. Someone can be given questions. Someone can cross night, memorize everything. You've got good actors, you know? <laughs> but then now as HR personnel, you have to be trained now to look out for those things. Because you can get someone who gives you all the best answers, five out of five. Uh, now you have to now produce, give me back. So, so it's the HR's work in terms of human resource to look out for all those things, right? So there's many subjective factors that are involved in the selection process. And then what are those, uh, what are those subjective factors? So I think in terms of the selection process, it's, it's the height of every, every HR program. Because you get the selection wrong, you've got the wrong person for the company, it's not going to be productive. Probably the person now is going to be demoralized and it's also going to now hit you in the pocket because you're going to be a, have a high turnover, resignations, absenteeism, all those things. So you have to, as HR, make sure that you get the right fit for the person. And then, especially now, in line with what's happening in South Africa in terms of the productivity level, more so in the, in the public sector, you know, to say, I want to say, government by Atzoafa, you know? But then, what did HR do when they recruited that individual, you know? Did they really scrutinize in terms of being subjective? And then, at the end of the day, besides HR dealing with the selection process, they make sure that the process complies with government legislation, right? As you know, we've got the employment equity, We've got the labor, the labor Relations Act, which now makes sure that no one's going to be discriminated against in terms of the selection process, whether through religion, disability, or all those things. So HR personnel play a very vital role when it comes to that, right? And then now, obviously, when it comes to selection, you'll now need managers as well. Some people, people who have insight about the job, who can now also uh, join hand in hand with your HR personnel during the selection process. So now, the selection process, just quickly. They will receive your, 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 your application. There's what you call now the initial screening. Initial screening is now you're checking is this person that is applying for this job meets the requirements? Do you have environmental health? You might find people that just, they don't even have the qualification, but they just throw engineering. Because you know there's a lot of unemployment. They just hoy their CVs. So they need to be screening. Otherwise, you'll end up employing the, 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 the wrong person. So we've got what you call application form or blanks. 
uh, this is what we call Z83. It makes it easier for the HR or whoever that is shortlisting to, instead of just going through the whole pile of CV, it's one pager, it will give you your qualifications, where this person is from, experience, all, all those things. And then obviously now, once that has happened, you are called in, you have your interviews. After the interviews, if you are successful, some interviews are followed by employment tests or assessment, you know, kind of just to, 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 to gauge you. Then obviously, then you've got your background checks. It's very critical, but we're going to go to the reference now in terms of reference checks. Why references are very critical, especially in this day and age when it comes to selection, you know? Because we have people who fake their credentials. We've got the Tabo Pestas of this world. <laughs> they say it, but they are not the person that they say they are. So it's very critical to do the background checks. Um, and then some jobs, whether it's mining, they'll now want to check your fitness, you'll do your medical tests, you know, and then you get your job off. So organizations, when it comes to the selection, there's a whole lot that the HR department needs to maneuver around, right? So just for you guys so that you can know as well, when it comes to selection and process, the purpose of interviews is to determine three things, right? Does the applicant have the ability to perform the job, right? Will the applicant be motivated to be successful? Don't want someone who's stagnant. Are you gonna grow the organization? Are you gonna grow yourself, you know? Will the applicant match the needs of the organization? If it's a job whereby you must lift, are you strong enough, you know? They can be a practical whereby you show your, yourself that you are strong enough, you know? Is, can you work overtime, you know? So you wanna determine all those things through the interview. Type of interviews. Normally, we'll have two type of interviews. It will be your structured interviews with a panel, especially if it's a well-organized uh, organization, your big organizations. And then sometimes you might find that you get to an interview, it's a casual talk, it's unstructured. Usually that will be like your smaller companies, but that now happens rare. Normally, it's the boardroom, you sit, structured questions. Um, so, so, so structured interviews, they have certain characteristics. But for you guys, it's very critical that you must just know that it's your questions. Questions are gonna be more on the job uh, uh, requirements. You get scored in that interview. I'm sure if you've uh, attended, you'll find they'll, they'll, they'll be scoring. Um, there'll be a committee. A committee is very critical because they need to now minimize bias. So you need to have at least five to four, whoever, depending on the size of the job, you know? And then it needs to be consistent. Same questions, same scoring for all applicants, right? Now, interviewers ask four questions, structured questions. You'll get, for example, situation questions. Um, situation questions is how you would deal with a certain situation when you're presented with it at work. If it's a management position, how do you deal with an absent worker? How do you deal with someone who comes to work drunk? You know, So those are situation-based questions. And then job knowledge questions, you guys are gonna be, you're doing environmental health. They can ask about certain legislations. Are you familiar with the certain legislations, you know? And then job simulation questions. Once you are in the job, how do you go about to conduct one, two, three? You understand what I'm saying? How do you go about doing an inspection at a funeral undertaker, you know? All those questions to see that indeed you've got practical knowledge on the job. And then obviously employee requirement questions, you know, are you willing to relocate after six months? They can check, you know, if you're married, if you've got family, you cannot just now relocate to Devon. So they, they, they gauge 
all those, all those things as an organization. Now, selection and recruitment is protected by law. So now, according to the labor legislation, organizations, when it comes to recruitment and selection, there is certain questions that they cannot ask you, right? Because it's a bit unfair. You get men who are part of the panel, you don't know what is their intention, so they might be sizing you there in the interview. But these are just some of the questions that you guys are not supposed to be asked. You know, how old are you? I'm here to work. I'm here to work. Are you, I'm here to work. Are you living alone? Excuse me. Do you have any plans for marriage? Can't be asked such questions. Do you have children? Are you affiliated to any political party? Which football club do you support? You know, what is your religion? So recruitment and selection in every organization is also governed by labor regulations. Yes. Uh, I just want to ask you, you said um, you can go back to the last one. The previous one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, how would they know that if, like, you have a family, if you didn't disclose it, first of all, you are CV. Uh -huh. Secondly, if you legally want to allow a higher level, you want to be a higher level, you have to ask them. Yes, yes, yes. So, how would they know if you were yeah. able to relocate? Yeah. Simply by looking. Okay. Remember when I started, I said there is no perfect way to test or gauge someone in an interview, right? So as HR personnel, I need to come up with questions that are going to be legal, but in a way that I'm, I'm testing. I can maybe ask a question, are you like this one? Okay, are you, are you, are you, are you, can you work overtime? It's legal. But then now I'll see if this person, like for example, as EHPs, there's events whether it's a stadium, is it a concert, it's on Saturday and Sunday, sometimes that's on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We need people who can now also be flexible, you know? So it's also, it's also about flexibility or discipline question, you know? So, but you must now not ask the ones that are illegal when you're an HR person in an interview. Mm -hmm. You have an idea of how... Who, what we want. Yeah. Yes. How do, do they expose this? <laughs> Remember, every, it's like a test. Every question has a... There's a memorandum, right? So you'll find that within the panel, there will be someone from the union. It's not an EHP. It's someone but who can ask questions, who needs to be briefed in terms of what we're expecting from the candidate so that they can also score you and they combine the scores. So they, of course, there's a certain answer that we expect from a candidate when, when we ask questions. Have I, have I, are you answered? So-so. So-so, okay, okay. Okay, so now we did, um, so those were the questions that are not supposed to be, to be asked. Now, you've done your interviews, um, you, you made an impression, right? But then that's not where it ends. As companies, as organizations, you know, we always say you must have references, at least three, you know? That is very critical. Why is that very critical? Because like I said, someone will, you know, there's, there's a red flag when people come for interviews. You'll find there's a huge gap between when they, they, they first worked and what they are currently doing. So you need to understand what was this person doing? Were they in prison? Were they in ICU? You know? And then you'll find that on the reference, all the companies that this person have, has been working for, they're all closed. So now you need to, at the end of the day, to what? To reference check at the end of, at the, end of the day, right? Organizations, when it comes to recruitment and selection, there's different types of ways in terms of uh, uh, referencing. For your high-end jobs, you know, like you're gonna be a vice counselor of, of UJ, normally you'll have HR personnel who actually drive to your 
for my employer. They can drive to meet up your friends and family just to get to know you. But this one is for your high-end jobs because it's very expensive to carry out this necessary reference check, right? There's, you can do a reference check via email, but this one is not uh, advisable or it's seldom, seldom done. Reason being, you send now to the whoever is your former boss, they may take weeks because they don't check their emails, right? And then sometimes they cannot really express themselves fully in terms of the type of a person you are when it comes to writing. So there's limitations to reference checking via email, right? And then the most obvious one, uh, or the one that we're most comfortable with, even as a manager, whoever, when you receive a call, you are able to express yourself uh, freely in terms of when they ask you what are the characteristics of this person who has applied for this job, right? So the most uh, uh, um, obvious one and the most one that is done is, is the, the phone call. And then we have ones now, there's also the outside services, which is your investigators. They also do reference checks, especially when you want to work in the banking sector, you know? They need to check your credit record. Sometimes you really want to double check the person's educational um, background because they can be fake qualifications that are happening everywhere, especially in terms to doctors and all those things, right? Uh, uh, yes? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of faking a reference, uh, no, not really. But what you'll have is that you put your friend as a reference and you'll say your friend was the boss, was your boss. So that, when it comes to references, is most uh, in terms of what's happening but not necessarily an email. Because now, if you put a fake email, you are disadvantaging yourself because it's going to bounce. No, but if I create that company... Oh, it's your one. one. I say so. Like, hey, uh, hey, you guys, hey. I make you guys are smart, yeah? <laughs> okay. I make an email. Yeah, email, you know? yeah, you know what? With, with, with technology, everything now, yeah? Even the number that you put there. Yes, it can be an extra sim that I... It can even be you. You've got two phones. Yeah. Then they call you like, ah, CD, the best of the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, so that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why uh, recruitment and selection, there has to be some serious steps that now organizations also have to be aware of, you know, especially with the... AI that's happening now prints out a whole nice environmental health qualification. You produce it. You're an EHP. You can print out even an HPCSA uh, uh, card with, with the. So you, you see. So as organizations, we have to be you know mindful of those things. Uh, you, you raised your hand, man. No. Yeah, no, no, not, not, not all jobs are gonna, I don't handle money. So I think for my organization to spend, to try and investigate my credit profile, I, 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 it doesn't make sense. But if you're gonna be now the, 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 the mayor, the recent mayor of Twani, the guy was bankrupt. How is he gonna now handle budget? <laughs> he, was, he can't even handle his own month to month, groza, what to what. Now you want him to run the whole city. So you have to do for those positions, do your background checks, right? So once, once um, I'm getting to the end, guys. Ne? So now once that, that has been done, the reference checks, like I said, there's some pre-employment tests sometimes, uh, depending on the type of jobs that, that you want or your position. I know, for instance, also in environmental health, it's not just a panel interview. Once you are done, there will be like a, a test, you know? And then certain companies, when it's mining, uh, you'll do a medical test uh, or whatever way is physical, you know? In your airport, I know when we're doing our COMSEF at Uar Tambo, you're hearing as well, you know? You don't want to be standing on the line, the flight is coming, you can't hear the flight is coming. <laughs> so you need to, your hearing needs to be very good when you're an EHP at the airport, right? Thank you.
So now, once that is done, everyone is happy. The organization has done all its recruitment process. They have done all their selection and they've looked at all those things that can happen. We fucking done the wrong, we call and it's not the right person. Because now you get employed, you become this unproductive person, you get paid for nothing. The company loses money. There's a high chance of you not uh, 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 resigning. So as no, every organization wants to invest in their employee, right? So also you guys sitting here, when you guys have to apply. You need to check the background of the company. Is this really what I want to do? We know which are we turn the org. Funan. Yeah? Oh, no, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. It's, I can't we are, we, are, we are colleagues. I'm just saying, you know? You know that you, 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 you family orientated, you're not, you, you wanna fetch your kids, you know, as you grow. You want to fetch your child from school. You want to do all those things. So sometimes the public sector might be more suited for you. But I would we are saying you must come as a lazy indi individual. You see? So once all that is done, then we all want to see all these words. We are pleased to offer you employment in this position. You are hired. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, the lecture is not done. There's, yeah, a question. there's a question here. Yeah. So, like, if, if, like, as someone who's part of the panel, mm -hmm. and you, ask, you ask the interviewee if he has any questions, what kind of questions do you expect to ask? Or what kind of questions are you usually asked? Okay. Normally, um, as, a, as someone who's also still going for interviews, yeah. you know, I want to, in a way, want to stick out. You know, so you have to be creative when you when you ask such a question, especially when you find that maybe you have been placed last, and you can see what the panel is You understand? So you can ask them questions like, "Mong Do you think I'm the right fit for the for the for the company? Do I what do I do you think I fit with the organization's goals and objectives?" Now, now they get thinking. You know, and then you must actually you also research. For example, um, the, the city of Johannesburg, there was a post for a DHIS uh, manager. DHIS is basically you gather all this data from the clinics, mm. HIV, diabetes, then you feed it to the World Health Organization. Mm. There's the right? health information systems. Yeah. So what happens is that they use this outdated DHIS software. You can ask them with the recent AI. How how is the city incorporating that in terms of uh, getting the data out there? You see, now they they start thinking. Hey, you know. <laughs> so you just have to think on your feet. You plant a seed. You stand out. Like, should I you, yeah, so th those are the technologically based questions, questions that are going to make the panel live on a think. Yeah, not, not, not how much am I going to get paid? Come on. I actually it's, wanted it's, to it's get in the, paid. It's in the job. When you apply, it's in the advert. Yeah. So that it's a you know they're like oh, so fine. so essentially one of the examples that Mr. Temba just made now is a question not to ask. Usually you don't ask questions around money when it's your first round of interviews because at that point you are challenging the competence aspect and you are differentiating yourself from your competition and the next person. So you coming here and wanting to know about money and how you can negotiate and whether leaving that job for this one, financial incentives and so on, you are expected to have come here already prepared yeah. in terms of that particular knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I wanted to ask you to the candidate. You say you know that they 
So, do to say for myself now, <coughs> how does my current academic record as to say I'm going to apply using it or I'm going to use my CV? Do you consider that the student or my country was one of the criminal and then the experience? <laughs> or let's say there's this one with the criminal yes. and this one with the experience. Uh -huh. Which one would you go for? Okay, I, I, no, I, I, that, 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 I will that, say my name. Yeah, that, that is a very important question, you know, because remember I, I told you, selection is actually picking the best individual. Suitable. Who's going to suitable for the job, right? But now, as someone who is shortlisting, all of you guys, fourth year students, again, you hand in your CVs. Obviously, there's no way. The cum laude one is going to stand out. Because I can see what you want to know. We are We are serious. I can remember, I said, he's talking about selection. I can remember, select selector from the CVs. You are still going to come one on one. And remember, as an HR person, you get trained again now to pick up Utu Kremil or Bagnila Makweshi. Because it happens, you see, you have a friend who is inside. We give a question. So it's, it's very good. I, I would say let's all work hard. Let's all try to stand out, you know? As students, you can work like a cafeteria. Again, it's experience. So I can see this person can balance. Work can balance, you know? So it's very, it's, 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 it's very good to make sure that you stand up. If you tell them, they come louder, I tell them, boy. So in other words, it works both ways. It works both ways. You can be a cum laude. There are certain attributes that they pick up from that. One of the attributes being diligence, the working hard, being able to understand and comprehend. Because remember, when you get that cum laude, they are also looking to trust the institution that you are emanating from or coming from. They, they trust that the institution wasn't asking you just list, name. They, they, they are trusting that just like in the interview, there's situation-based questions, questions that will be there. There are practical-based questions that will be there. There are examples and scenarios that you need to, to present with whatever assessment. That's why even the type of assessments that they give you in the institution, it will never be just one size fits all. Some is assignments, some it's group presentations, individual presentations, test assi assi assessments where you actually script out what it is you need to provide. So being a cum laude, it will make you stand out because there aren't many cum laude, so immediately. Unfortunately, some of you missed out on last week's lecture where we were stand talking about standing out from the crowd. So those that are there aren't going to ask that question. Then on the, on the flip side, on the flip side, there's the issue of having experience, having skill, having shown yourself to work harder than others by e exposure, through exposure. An example was giving you working at the cafeteria, meaning understanding business and some of the attributes that are needed for a successful business. Being a diligent employee, knowing punctuality, uh -huh. uh, knowing how to interact with customers, dealing with complaints from customers, conflicts between yourselves and the other colleagues at the cafeteria that you are dealing with, right? Then there are various programs here. He was actually part of a number of programs. He studied at TUT. He was a tutor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, let me not take your shine. <laughs> it's, it's for you. As you go along, you'll yeah, actually give them a yeah. bit of, of your actually, background as well. I even forgot about all those things. Because of all the things that you are doing. So it works out both ways. So if you can merge the two, where you are actually able to fuse into yeah. someone who's book smart, but also experience street smart as well. Mm -hmm. Is your follow-up answered? Okay. So let's say this candidate in the interview the Thomas, but the one that is working uh, oh. the yes, yes. Yeah, but they are from the same. Like let's say we all have graduate this year, some come to school now, 
Yes. But the one who what happened to that? Is what? Is the, I can't even speak. Yes. Yeah. No, re remember I told you that all interviews, especially structured interviews, they all have certain characteristics. I guess. And in, 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 an, in an interview, there's panel. You get scored. Then to avoid bias, even if you know cum laude, but this one does not have cum laude, it has to, at the end of the day, your scoring, it will determine who at the end of the day is going to get the job. So your cum laude might lend you the interview. But now, in the interview, you must still now go to the panel, show yourself that you know the job, you understand what the job is about. Are you the best fit for the organization? So we interview, I come loud, I see. We push it aside. So if you get an interview, when you come loud, I don't have, but you both get shortlisted. I will show you, Chad. <laughs> the best man. Ah, then unfortunately, <laughs> you must practice now. Yeah, it works on the flip side as well. Your CV is your voice, mm -hmm. right? Your CV is what is presented on your behalf um, to the panel, to the shortlisting panel. Mm -hmm. So if your CV has also all that experience, we are expecting that in the interview you will deliver some of the examples I made just with the cafeteria example. Yes. Those interpersonal skills, being able yeah. to speak for yourself and articulate. Yeah. And, and, it, and, uh, we are expecting that to actually yeah. be the and case. And I believe, I'm sure, all of us here, we are health, we're doing health, environmental health, right? So we chose a skill whereby you guys must be able to, to speak. So I'm sure in here, everyone can speak, can articulate themselves. They have a couple of months, if they're not there yet. Yeah, I, I think you've been raising your hand, eh? Sir, I want to ask, I also come down upon, so do they only look at the, at the, so for you to speak, they have to only look at the Kumbhana, or they look at the average as well, and you have to ask your uh, academic record. Like, is it only the Kumbhana? No, no, not really. Like he said, for example, okay, I'm going to talk about myself. Before I, when my career started, right? Before I, 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 I even started with my ComSev, within my institution, I went to TUT. I got Corres. I was head of res, right? I was part of the student mentor, whereby we were mentoring, we were mentoring the students. I get that itself. It shows, okay, I can be good academically. But it means if he's head of res, if he's a student mentor, meaning that he can balance between work-life balance, because that is very critical. You need to know how to balance the two. So like even now, remember CVs uh, are becoming one page. We don't want to know. We know in environmental health that you must do all these things. Just say we've got a qualification, BTEC in environmental health. All those things will, will follow. One pager, sell yourself as much, but summarize. Because remember, as, as well, as I'm recruiting, I, I get piles and piles, piles, you get piles and piles of CVs. You can't now check oh, totally 85% who epidemiology. <laughs> I don't have time. One pager, that's why I talked about application blanks, which is your Z83. It summarizes the applicant's qualification, background, He's the all those. Yeah. So just to answer you further, if you got a cum laude and it shows consistency where any distinction go fail, then add it, add your transcript or your academic yeah. record yeah. because then it will stand out even more. Yeah. If you didn't, then don't add it. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Because now they're going to compare this one. They're going to compare this one that did edit with you. They're like, hey, oh, name mama, oh, you know. <laughs> so if you did, then use it to your advantage, essentially. If you didn't, then use other attributes and skills and other talents of yours to shine yeah. in the process. Yeah, yeah. Just speak louder, me. You apply. No, sorry, you work in the HR. No, no. I'm an environmental. 
Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It's your job to select people. Right? Mm-hmm. And in the way you post for jobs, you don't use this for what you would see you doing. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you're not doing your job. Yes. But remember that. Why, why do you think it's a lot of jobs? Okay, but but remember, guys, with 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 our history, you know that we we have a lot of, especially we have a lot of unemployment. So you know that when there's a vacancy, you're gonna get ten thousand applications, and then remember, the company has time to fill their position, right? That's why we're even encouraging that you make your CV as short as, as possible to, so that the person who's going through the CV can go through so much. Because if we have situations whereby CVs are just being thrown, by a katala, and that now is being realistic. Okay, but now reality is where? But remember now, like I told you guys, I, we spoke about different type of external uh, recruiting, right? We spoke about the e-recruiting, um, the, 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 the LinkedIn. Uh, we talked about the organization's intranet. So now we have a, a system whereby the computer can easily uh, screen if you are the right candidate in terms of what they, com- what they ask you. Like so it course. actually minimizes going through the, your hardcore CVs. So that, that's how most organizations are moving into that now. And then the computer will do their job. So in our time, just to add on to what yeah. Mr. Tim has said, in our time, a cover page was critical. The cover page is where you narrated your entire career journey. It was just one page where you highlighted what are the key things that you want whoever's going through your things to remember about you. That's why this element of standing out keeps resurfacing. So now, instead of a cover page, then it's replaced by that one-page CV. That one-page CV is supposed to serve the purpose of describing you in a, the quickest limited resource available, which is time. Right? If you can't do that, then how are you going to convince them that you're going to save the organization? time and being optimal in delivering and so on (laughs) yeah but you find optimal ways of delivering on that job if you're gonna go from a standard mode of saying it's my job and therefore i must do that then the organization in and of itself is losing because there's four of you in the shortlisting panel so the organization is losing time and human resources by trying to get that one resource so rather you stand out, you on the other side are selling yourself to me, who's busy scrutinizing the CVs. Not the other way around. Right now we've advertised, recruited. I get the recruitment process where we are selling ourselves to you. Once you've submitted and we are now shortlisting, it's your turn to sell yourself to us so that we take you to the selection part of the process. Mm. So it may be my job, but if I find smarter ways of looking at it, then it's sorted. Yeah. There was a hand somewhere. Yeah, there's a, there's a hand there. Just always speak I, louder, guys. Can, can hear? Want to hear what you're saying. The Z83. No, no. no. Normally, your Z83s government. will be your know, government positions. That's, what, that's where they, 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 they want those. Um, but certain companies as well, you'll have... Uh, especially when you're applying through the, 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 the computer. You'll have like a set of questions on one page. That can also form part of an application blank. We call it application blank in the HR lingo. It's like a Z83. Yeah. The army can- but don't put it if it's not required, no. Yeah. They actually specify Those- an important point just on that Z83. When you apply to provincial and national government, they actually specify that you must add that form. And sometimes, remember, there's 10,000 applications. Mm. You've tried your best to stand out, but a simple thing, such as using an outdated Z83 form, kicks you out. Yeah. So some, you must also 
submit the updated Z83 form for you then to get to the next level. Because even when they do shortlist, they shortlist in cycles. There are 10 posts, 10,000 applications, one post, 1,000 allocations. Then they have to take it down to six per post. Yeah. So those small Ayana things are the things that kick you out. Or oh, your CV is not certified. Your <laughs> license. Certified. Your license is not certified. <laughs> your ID is not certified. They use that as a loophole to kick you out. So they, cum laude or not, you are out. <laughs> Someone with a license beat you when unal cum laude. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then can I, can I just add to what he's saying? You know, um, when next time, when you guys have time, when I come back again, we need to talk about what you call career management, right? Especially now, if you're going to apply using like things like a Z83 or a one-pager CV, how do you stand out? There's no way that you can just have environmental health and you, sh you stop me. It's very important that when you guys complete, when you get out there, you agree you've chosen a career. This is your career. So it's very important that you train and develop yourself. That is also going to help you to stand out. You know, my colleague can, might have 10 years environmental health. I might have 10 years. But I'm currently studying with UP. Automatically, what do I do? Because I'm investing in, in, in my, my career. I have a question. Do you need a license on the <laughs> no, share, yeah. share the story. You know, you know, you know story. why I'm laughing. You know why I'm laughing. You know why I'm laughing. Can I can I tell you a personal story? So me and him, we did our comsev at Oar Tam, right? So they were Gigi cars, the Gigi's. So, um, bargain the comsevs were not allowed to drive. Or so, so we, we were told. Yeah, so we were told. But we had our licenses. But then comsevs were not allowed to drive. Ah, but <laughs> that's actually where we learned how to drive. But we would take the, the company vehicle, drive to festi you know, festival mode. Yeah. So I would drive going, because I carry a head. And then the one who ate him, the one who carried Koloiti ah, and then that day gets la laughed at. So this one, I'll always cheat, you go when we're going back, and it <laughs> goes up. But I remember then, and then fortunately, it's not something to be proud of, but we got a written warning. Comsev. Comsev. We were actually the first Comsev yeah. to get warnings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's bad. So, but then, <laughs> yeah, we stood out. <laughs> but to answer you, you have to have a, a drive. It's very, it's very important, because some... Uh, whether you're working especially for province, there's vehicles, you know. So it's always good to have a license. You do, you're standing out as well. Yeah. But many lessons were learned there because we're, we're, they fabricated that there's a policy that says commissars are not allowed to drive. And it was not even we said produce the policy. <laughs> they couldn't. So we drove and they gave us warnings. But even the warnings couldn't really stand because they couldn't produce the policy. It was just management, being management pulling their muscles around those particular things. So it's not the best way to challenge because you're still starting out in the career. You don't want uh, <laughs> to build those type of relationships where you, you got written warnings or any type of warning <laughs> for that matter. Yeah. Instead, it's a matter of making sure that you build yourself beyond that. I think I'd give him the opportunity to close and then... Yeah. Okay. Um, you know what, guys? Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I always look forward to come to UJ. I think I'm now friends of the university because it's like what my third time. So you are the third group of of, of third years that I get to be invited. Final years. Uh, uh, final years. Mm -hmm. You know, to get to be invited to to lecture. So I think maybe UJ must. Give me something. <laughs> <laughs> but then you know what? Uh, you know, some weekends I give you something. Yeah. My friend. You know, I think this, this particular topic when it comes to recruitment and selection, I hope that you guys now have an idea in terms of what the organization wants out there, you know, and then just apply it. It's coming, it's going to be in your next test. And then 
there's guys who come as well when you're talking about selection. There's guys who are coming to do well. Uh, there's there's this familiar faces that I see now who are at, at, at my region. You know, there's certain guys who, who stand out. And uh, trust me, we see you. Remember we talked about the university school recruitment. It's all about standing out. The competition is tough, guys, out there. It's not the same as before, you know? Um, so I wish you guys all the best. I hope to meet you guys for the interviews. And I know you guys are going to do good because you know what you're going to expect. So thank you very much, guys. And good luck. Oh, so, 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 so.